Hey, it's Meatball. And Mark. And this is the Rocker Morning Show on demand from 1077 RKR. 1077 RKR is the Rocker Morning Show with Meatball. And Mark Frankhouse. What's up, buddy? I don't hold lot. How you doing? I'm I'm good. How are you feeling today? Great. Yeah? Yes, sir. Uh, would I have anything to do with this? Guardians won game one. Tigers trying to get one on the road before they return to Detroit. Runner goes, pitch is swung on, a high fly ball to right field. This one is going to fly! A three-run home run, Carey Carpenter! Yeah, it's pretty cool. Big, the big Tigers shot. Up three to nothing as Carpenter, an emphatic, towering fly ball home run. Into the bleachers in right field. What a moment. That sounded like it was at Comerica was so loud. It was, uh, It was, the silence was also deafening. <laughs> That's if fair. If you saw That's some fair. of the clips, the fans were just defl- just deflated. Yeah. Completely. Because I knew, I was like, they're going to get it. Like, we were texting with my brother and my dad, and they're like, come on, you got to score. I was like, they'll get it. I had a feeling they were going to win yesterday, but, like, a home run like that was, like, yeah. Huge. Oh, it's so, going scoreless into the ninth. Like the, the more, the longer you go scoreless, the more you know that that first run is going to mean. Yeah. Because I mean, if you if you put up a couple, you know, early on in the game, maybe not five in the first inning, but if you put up quite, if you put up a few runs early on in the game, you're like, all right, let's just regroup. We're good. You know, reset. We're 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 fine. The longer you go in a game without a single run. Yeah. Those those one runs become that much more important, and then a moment like that was just awesome. So it sends it back to Detroit this mm-hmm. week, and they have the chance to close it out in Detroit. Yeah, they just have to win out. Um, this is a five game series, not not seven. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, and this is the last five game series. This is the only five game series in the in the league. So, yeah, it's going to be tough. But again, you're coming home. For back-to-back games, you don't want to go back to Cleveland. Yep, uh, that's, stealing that's one on the sure. road. Stealing one on the road in Cleveland was a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, you you knew it had to be done uh, in order to to finish in Detroit, and now you have that opportunity. And it's like you and I were talking this morning too. It seems like that first game, you know, Cleveland threw everything they could in that first game, and Detroit was kind of like they they had like I think they had an extra day off and like. There was there was a chance for them to kind of take their foot off the accelerator there for that first game, mm-hmm. and I think that's kind of what did them in uh, over the weekend. But I think now that they've got their foot back on the gas, uh, I'm I'm kind of with you, man. I think it's gonna be good. Well, it's gonna be an interesting game for sure, and I think again, if, if you just need to win two games, they they yeah. won one yesterday. They'll be back home. Hopefully, they can wake the bats up again. Their their bullpen. Had the disadvantage, or they're they're basically their pitching had the disadvantage starting the series, yeah. Because the Guardians had pretty much their ace pitcher uh, on the mound, whereas the Tigers did not. Last night we had our ace and we won, so now we got a little bit more depth to work with. So we'll see. Uh, maybe we got in their head a little bit. Now's where the uh, now's where the teams start playing mind games with each other. Where it's like, who are you bringing up? Like, are you planning on a game five? Are you going to bring out, you know, your 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 you're scrubbed to let one go and then try and bring it back to Cleveland type of deal. Like, you know, you start playing those mind games of like, oh, this game doesn't matter. We really want to do this. You know what I mean? It's basically the daily five trivia game of (laughs) baseball. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. I will say last night uh, during that hit, um, Cleveland, they showed the, uh, the dugout. Cleveland looked so deflated and down after that home run. I thought Margaret Witten from Major League, from the Major League movies, <laughs> was going to show up and announce that she had just bought the team again. RKR, it's a rock and morning show with Mark Frankhouse. And Meatball. I asked our audience what the most avoided road was in Southwest Michigan, and uh, the result was pretty unanimous. I'm kind of surprised, especially with the construction that's been going on. That mm-hmm. Apparently, I-94 may be the most avoided stretch of road in the state. Really? I mean, it was overwhelming. There were so many people on our Facebook that were like, I-94, I-94. Really? And I haven't had too many bad experiences. I mean, I know during rush hour traffic, if I'm heading out west towards like Paw Paw, I know to get into the passing lane because every other lane basically backs up. Yeah, 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 because people are turning up 131 there. I mean, with that being said, it is the link between Detroit and Chicago, so it's pretty necessary 
if you plan on going to the east side from the west or vice versa, unless you decide to take that northern stretch and cut through Lansing and Flint yeah. and come down through the top, I mean, I I think a case could even be made that Woodward Avenue during baseball season is like one of those ones that you want to stay away from. Mm-hmm. I-75 can get really brutal, 696. Actually, where I grew up on the east side of the state, Hall Road, which is M59, uh, that gets awful because it merges from like these side roads into a kind of highway. Yeah. And it just gets so backed up because then you're talking about, you know, two merging lanes into four lanes of highway. So now you got six lanes that could get super congested. Mm-hmm. So it's it's pretty bad. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I-75, 696 can also get really crappy too, but it, I don't know. It seems like I-94 has a slight advantage. Is there a road that you typically try to avoid out here? I mean, right now it's it's Michigal. Like yeah. I'm, I'm staying as far away from that as possible. Well, luckily you can't even go on Michigal. <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, staying away from that area. Yeah. Like, any of those, any of those high construction areas, and that sucks for again a lot of the businesses and stuff we talk about in that area. But yeah, I I mean, I don't think I-94 is that bad. Nah. I mean, I use it if I need to get across town quick. You know, that's where I jump to. Um, sometimes I'll take, uh, kind of the business route through town, but I mean, you know, if I'm, if I'm not in a hurry, I don't mind driving through downtown. I know a lot of people are going to complain about downtown cause like they lost a lane to the bike lanes and stuff. But mm-hmm. the, the, the thing about that is, is like, that was kind of the whole point was to slow traffic down through downtown. So it's a little safer for pedestrians and, and cyclists, you know, yeah, exactly. So like as much as people want to complain about that, that was the point Yeah, <laughs> was to slow everyone down. Um, I don't know. Like, there's not really there's not really streets that I avoid. I guess unless it's like, I don't know, under construction and stuff. But mm-hmm. even then, like, I I just try not to be in that big a hurry. And I try to I not to say that I completely stay away from it. But like when I'm heading home, I'll let I'll hit Riverview and I'll ho- immediately hook a left onto Mill Street and take it to Crosstown. Mm, so I'll yeah. probably add three minutes to my trip home, but I, I justify it by being able to continue moving. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's farther away. I will say I I've I've started doing less of if I'm if I'm going across town and I need to hop on, you know, West Main or something like that, um I don't drive through Kalamazoo Avenue through downtown as much mm-hmm. anymore. I take the roundabout there off of Gull Gull Street and 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 take it all the way down there, you know. Oh, dude. Uh, yeah. the, the what is that? That's the railroad route. I was right? gonna say, yeah, getting yeah. stuck on Kalamazoo because of a train just ruins my entire that's, day. That's always my biggest thing is like cause because you and I are work shifts, like that's always when trains are coming through there. So yes. yeah. Um that, that's maybe the most I avoid a road, I guess, now. Hit us up, 978-1077. What is your most avoided stretch of road in southwest Michigan? Yeah. Also, tell us uh, what ridiculous lengths you're going to go to to avoid these. Because <laughs> I, I I seriously can't be the only one to justify going way out of my way just so I don't have to sit in traffic. <laughs> right. Let's keep moving. It's time to turn up your dials and tune out the traffic because we're playing The Day Five. On the Rocker Morning Show, testing the mental magnitude of your favorite morning monkeys on the radio. And now, your hosts for the Daily Five, Meatball and Mark Frank House. It is the Daily Five where Mark and I ask each other questions. The other one answers. Today, I'm asking the questions. Mark is answering. Mark, you got some help on the line today from Samantha. Good morning, Samantha. How are you? Good. How about you? We're great, Samantha. You got to help me get three out of five questions correct. If you do, we'll take the two nothing lead for the week. If not, Meatball will tie it up. All right. Question number one this is sports. Maybe the most pertinent one right now for you, Mark. What is the most consecutive World Series? that the Tigers have appeared in. And just a little clarification there, it's the max number of back-to-back World Series that they've been to, like, Mm -hmm. in a row, right? Is it two, three, or four? Um, I'm saying three. Three? Man, I'm trying to remember when that would be. The 50s. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I think it was in the 50s, if I'm not mistaken. Both feeling three in a row? Hmm. Mark's not as confident. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't know. Uh, it could be most likely the low end, but yeah, I'll, I'll stick with Samantha and say three on this one. All right, 
Going three, final answer. That is correct. Was that Uh, in the 50s? No, actually. uh, The early aughts of the 1900s. So 1909, they lost to the Pirates. And 1907 and 08, they lost back-to-back to to the Cubbies. So three World Series appearances in a row, lost all three of them. But that's okay. That's all right. We definitely don't think that's going to happen this time, right? Question number two, this is entertainment. How did the artist Sting get his name? Was it because he has a scorpion tattoo? He misunderstood a review that said he stinks, not stings, and he ran with it. Or he was famous for wearing a black and yellow striped sweater. Oh, um, the news article kind of sounds fun. (laughs) Yeah, the the misunderstood thing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That'd be kind of funny. Um, yeah, I think we'll run with that one, Samantha. That one seems to be the funniest. Um, yeah, if if it's because he looked like a bee, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah we'll, go, we'll go with the uh, misunderstood one, the second one. Going misunderstood stinks for Sting's final answer. Uh, nope. It's because he looked like a bee. He would wear a black oh, no. and yellow striped sweater. That is asinine. <laughs> Yeah. All right, question number three. This is food. All right. Sort of. The first ever licensed Happy Meal toy for a movie was for what film? Was it Star Trek, Batman, or E.T.? Star Trek, Batman, or E.T.? Mm-hmm. Huh. Um, a first licensed one. Yeah. Uh, yep. I'm thinking Batman. Yeah, I was kind of feeling Batman, too. I was on there with you. No Batman, the first one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Batman Returns. Right, well, that's so, fair. That's fair. So. Um, Star yeah. Trek, Batman, or E.T.? I, ca- I could see a case for E.T., but you know what? I'm with you, I'm with you, Samantha. I think it's Batman. Uh, let's go with Batman, final answer. Going Batman, final answer in 1979. Wow, Star Wars. Star Trek. Oh, Didn't you no. say Star Wars? Star Trek. I thought you said Star Wars. I said Star Trek. Samantha, I said Star Trek, right? I'm not sure. I've never watched it. So. I thought you said Star Wars. We'll go check the tape, but I'm pretty sure I said Star mm, Trek. That might... Mm. I don't know. I Ron Burgundy these, and I have down Rod, uh, Star Trek, so we'll see. We'll go check the tape. Okay, we'll check the tape on this one. Yeah. Either way, we got to run the table here, Samantha. All right, question number four. Oh. This is agriculture. The first cash crop of North America was what? Was it tobacco, corn, or sugar cane? It was uh, definitely tobacco. They they actually smuggled it into Jamestown. So actually at the time, I think uh, England had a... England actually had a tax on that, but they weren't even... It was actually illegal to bring it over. But that was like... I was going to say tobacco, too. Yeah, let's go tobacco, final answer. Wacky, tobacco... Well, not wacky, just tobacco, <laughs> final answer. Yeah, that was it. All right. <laughs> I'm sure they had it's, that, too. The wacky, the wacky tobacco came later. Yeah. yeah. All right. Rolling on down. Question number five. This is history. Oh. Which famous gangster described himself as a used furniture salesman on his business cards? Was it Bugsy Siegel, Al Capone... Or John Dillinger? Uh, Dillinger kind of sounds like a Bugsy furniture salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Bugsy Siegel, Al Capone, John Dillinger. Don, John Dillinger. John Dillinger kind of had the look too with that little pencil mustache that he had too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you want to buy a couch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what John Dillinger sounded like. What are you That's thinking? Just... <laughs> yeah, I was almost feeling Bugsy. What are you thinking? You're feeling Bugsy? I'm almost feeling Bugsy, but I don't know. I could see maybe John Dillinger. I'm trying to remember what he did other than, like, committed crime. Um, Dillinger was the one they did that movie about. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What are, you, what are you feeling, Samantha? Yeah. What's that? What were you thinking? I was feeling Bugsy. That was my gut. Let's go with Bugsy, then. That's Bugsy. Final answer. Going Bugsy, final answer. No. It was Al Capone. Al Capone. Interesting. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Thought, well, he, thought he was a used furniture salesman. Well, could not get the win today. Meatball gets his first win since uh, Thursday, two weeks ago. <laughs> but we're going to have to go back and check the tape on that because uh, that might, uh, I don't know. That I'm might almost certain I said it. Star Trek. Was it Star Trek? Star Trek. Star Trek. Well, hey, you know what? We'll give Meatball the W. And uh, you get the W too, Samantha, because you are going to go to Donut and Beer Fest at Homer Striker Field. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun, and we're going to be able to uh, cheers a beer together. All right. Hey, way to go. Congratulations. One zero seven seven RKR is the Rocker Morning Show with me, Paul. And Mark Frankhouse. Did you uh, see recently we had a celebrity in the state of Michigan? Which one? We uh, have a lot of celebrities. Well, that's fair. That's fair. One that's not actually from Michigan. Uh, was coming to hang out in the state. Shaq was okay. Seen. He was uh, here promoting his chicken place. He's got the uh, the chicken sandwich shops. Uh, I believe it's called what is it? Big Chicken. Yeah, the Big Chicken. Um, mostly affiliated with like Carnival Cruises and stuff, but he does have some brick and mortar places around the U.S. Uh, but yeah, he was in town uh, in in the state for one of his three Big Chicken locations in Michigan. He's got one in Clio and Livonia. And then uh, the one in Heartland, which I think uh, was where he was at this past week. And uh, I, that one just opened recently. So I think he was just stopping in to, like, take it all in and uh, see where he put his new chicken joint, check the place out. Uh, but, yeah, Shaq was in town. He was uh, serving up people from inside. He was taking the photos, uh, signing autographs, doing the whole thing. It was really, really cool. Uh, to see, you know, some of the photos and posts and stuff about him being there. Have you ever been to, like, one of those celebrity restaurants ever and, like, maybe seen a celebrity there? No, I've never been to one single celebrity restaurant in my life. Never been to, like, a Wahlburgers uh, or even Mom's Spaghetti? Oh, you know what? Okay. okay, Wahlburgers, I've been to once. Okay. I forgot about that. That okay. was, I was uh, very drunk. Um, <laughs> that's why I forgot. That's about it, though. But, I mean, I used to, like I said, I used to work in... Red Lobster and a sports bar. And I mean, it was not uncommon that like George Blaha from the Detroit Pistons would yeah. come in and order the messiest thing on the menu five minutes before we close. <laughs> and I'm um, still bitter about that, are you? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but then we had a bunch of dudes from like when I was working at the sports bar, you know, they would come in and couple of dudes from the bad boys so it was, it was pretty cool yeah but i never other than Wahlburgers, like and that was just a, a freak like i we got out of a tigers game and yeah we were looking for something to eat and we were just there but other than that i haven't really been to a celebrity restaurant before it's we have um when i was living down in oklahoma they have billy sims barbecue down there and obviously okay. billy sims big you know heisman trophy winner big time for ou that kind of stuff uh he was opening a new location in the town we were at and um Showed up the day of uh, the grand opening. They had this big, giant, uh, inflatable Billy Sims on the corner with the big old afro, you know, from yes. when he was playing at OU. <laughs> uh, we were doing interviews with him. We got to do the Heisman pose with him, which was really cool. But I, I have this photo somewhere, and I, I'm going to have to dig this up, of Billy Sims doing uh, delivery orders or takeout orders for the drive through window. He's literally leaning out the window and, like, smiling and giving a thumbs up out the drive through window. Ah! Of his barbecue joint, hand and barbecue to people. And, like, they had no idea Billy was there. That's awesome. You know, it was a very cool moment. It was very, very cool. Um, so, yeah. Um, but the, the the chicken place looks good um, that Shaq's got. If you want to go visit, uh, you can do that. We've got the gallery up of all the food and stuff at WRKR.com. Uh, I am going to have to, I'm going to have to make the trip to Hartford, I think, to try this place out. I think there's one in Chicago that's actually closer. But if I'm going to Chicago... I'm not eating fast food chicken, even if it is owned by Shaq. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sadly, not a place where you're going to see me um, try and get one of those free deals, too, uh, because Shaq's not really into doing free stuff, especially when it comes to throws. Um, actually, if you do try to get something free from Shaq, he just hands out bricks. 1077 RKR, it is the Rocker Morning Show with Meatball. And Mark Frankhouse. And please welcome to the studio our initial Rocker Rides winner, Bud. How are you, man? Bud how Woods. are you? Yes. Great experience. Man, we can't we can't express how excited we were that you won this truck, man. Um 
you know, the, the we'll, we'll get into kind of the details of the contest and stuff. But when it came down to it and you were up there and it just, when, 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 the, when the thing went off and you nearly dropped to your knees, man, that oh, was just a special moment. I was so excited. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily you had someone right next to you to kind of pick you up because right. it was, it was an intense moment. It really was. Cause we were, we're not expecting a winner to come down to it the way it did. That's right. Uh, you couldn't have scripted it any better, but that's really what happened, man. Yep. We had uh, 10 finalists and it got down to the last two. And yep. it was, it was intense. Either you're going to win it or our good buddy Bronzo is going to win it. Yeah, and yeah. man, how fast was your heart beating when you pulled that key fob? I don't fob? think it was beating. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You pulled that key fob out, you hit the button, the alarm went off and it was just uh unbelievable experience let me tell you <laughs> now, now, i can't remember what truck did you pick again oh, just, this again um, oh, well I'll have, to, <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to say it was a chevy Silverado. <laughs> oh yeah that's right yeah. i don't blame forgot <laughs> right yeah we got ryan and josh in here too from tapper <laughs> that's uh what do you guys feel about about uh bud's choice there well, I'm I'm not real happy with it, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, that, that's how it goes. But I, I'm really happy for Bud. Yeah. That's the great thing. Yeah, it, it was a great promotion for all of, you know, everybody involved, I think, between Warner Vineyards, RKR, right. and, and the Tappers. You know, we, we were really happy to be part of this partnership. And it's almost perfect, too, because we're, we're out there so much, especially during the summer. Yeah. And we're all basically, like, hanging out together. Because Tapper Automotive is right next to Warner Vineyards. It mm -hmm. really is a perfect partnership. And considering this is the first time we ever did anything like this, we got uh, nearly 2,000 entries, at least 2,000 entries uh, when we were there in person yep. at Warner. We got even you know more at the Tapper Automotive locations and on air as well. So it went over, it went over huge. And everybody yeah. was super excited at the event when we gave away the truck, which was really awesome. Like there, there was a couple of people even afterwards that came up and said, Hey, thanks for like, even just giving us something for showing <laughs> up and like, you know, cause like in the past, it's only been one winner. That's it. Nobody yep. else wins anything, but we wanted to make it more of an experience. And I think we can only get that with that partnership at Tapper. Yeah. Well, we appreciate uh, you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, very much with that. And you know what? We're, we're really looking forward to, doing this again <laughs> oh gosh yeah moving forward with it and uh you know stay in touch for next year and uh see what we got uh up our sleeve yeah the meetings and plans already that we're starting to make this bigger and better again for next year yeah but right the little tweaks as we went along with this know how we want to, how we want to make it better <laughs> next year we got yep. some stuff up our sleeves i think that's going to make this a, it, it's going to make it even more exciting even if you're just one of the finalists next year like I think you're going to really love what we have. Now, Bud, I want to chat with you a little bit about your uh, about your brand new truck. Uh, you've had it uh, about a, a little over a week now, almost two weeks. Is that right? Almost two weeks, yep. What's your favorite button to push in the truck? Because there's a lot of them in there. Well, um, my favorite button is the radio station. That's what's up. I like that one. I, like I got that the one. preset Beautiful. button at 107.7. <laughs> the rocker. Bud, you don't have to kiss. You already won the truck. You okay. don't have to. Okay. <laughs> He's just warming you up for next year, Meatball. There you go. Bud's <laughs> right? yeah. going to win the truck next year, too. You've, you've got, I, I heard from, I believe it was your wife said that you've already got a truck. It's kind of older. You got like an older truck, which is kind of like a beater, right? It is. It's a 2004 Chevy um, Duramax, but okay. it's, it's getting tired. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. It's well, good. Good for the back roads, but this new one's good for just cruising along, right? right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for showing off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you looked through the whole booklet about all the different features, you know, the seat warmers, the hand warmers, I all have. that? I have. Even this morning, I turned it on, and my hands were getting warm. I see, <laughs> well, this must be automatic, and the seat just came on automatically. <laughs> oh, my so. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite a new experience with all the... Fun stuff, right? And I see you're you're in you're well into. I've got a new vehicle mode too because when you pulled in, you backed all the way to the back of the parking lot where you're not going to get any dings on the doors or anything. <laughs> exactly. Like <that>. Yep. <laughs> Smart. It's that way at all my stores I go to. <laughs> well, again, thanks for participating in this one and uh, for supporting the Rocker for 35 years because I know you've been listening since the beginning. And this is the first thing you've ever won from the rocket, <laughs> exactly. which is yeah. asinine. But like, what a perfect, <laughs> what a perfect first thing to win—a friggin' car, oh, man, a truck. It.
Well, from I, uh, from Tapper Automotive, man. I've entered at every contest that they've had. <laughs> <laughs> that is wild. <laughs> well, congrats again, and really thank you to to you, bud, and for Tapper Automotive as well. This has been amazing. Yeah. Really looking forward to next year. It's going to be bigger than this year, and we're uh, we're already getting some things underway that are going to boost this thing up. So now, Josh and Ryan too. I want to touch on you know we're, we we'll come back next summer, obviously, for the Rocker Rides. We'll do this again, but uh, but I mean, you guys have got stuff that you're doing over at the dealership as well. You're getting ready for fall in winter people are going to need some vehicles over there for sure absolutely it's truck month going on right now so you know we have both of our locations stocked full of uh you know those four-wheel drives uh we're hoping not a lot of snow this year but uh, <laughs> we do live in michigan so you, you never know with that so. it's a la nina year so there's supposed to be more snow i think <laughs> yeah as josh was saying uh inventory levels are coming back to a uh, more normal status so you're looking for an suv truck both stores right across the street from one another have, has what they're looking for. I love it. I love it so much. Well, we're, we're stoked to have you guys involved next year uh, with the Rocker Rides. And uh, I think we got some other projects brewing with you guys, too, in the in the coming months as well. So a uh, few surprises there. But, uh, but yeah, man, uh, thank you guys for being a part of this. It was a ton of fun. I know Pat Warner's out there listening to us from Warner Vineyards. Yep. Thank him as well for being a part of this. And, Bud, man, I, I, I don't think we could be any more happy that you were the one that won the truck, man. Yeah, well, I really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank Meatball, Mark Frankhouse, Mary and Robin for there, and Josh and Ryan from Tapper Automotive. And, um, of course, Pat. Warner from Warner Vineyards. Well, we're uh, we're happy to to have done this for you, man. We're just glad that you're in a an awesome new truck out there. And how many times have you washed it since you bought it or since you got um, it? Probably four. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I and love waxed it. Waxed it twice. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for popping in early in the morning. I know it's early for you guys, but uh, <laughs> we appreciate you having us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bud, again, congratulations. And uh, man, everybody, just, watch out for the rocker rides next year because we're going to blow your face out. You know it. It's going to be a ton of 1077 RKR. It is the Rocker Morning Show with Meatball and Mark Frank House. Are you aware that there is a metaphorical gold mine hidden in Michigan? Uh, uh, allegedly. Allegedly. And uh, it is actually a literal silver mine rumored to be hidden up in the uh, Upper Peninsula. That's pretty rad. This could possibly also be, if, if the rumor holds true, one of the largest solid silver deposits ever found. Man. Uh, so this is chronicled in a book called The Wall of Silver, A Treasure Hunter's Dream. It's available now on Amazon. Um, we've got the link up now on WRKR.com. It's Richard, uh, written by Richard Kellogg, um, who talks about actually visiting the Wall of Silver Mine with his buddy Jake Stockard, who uh, founded originally back in the 1920s. Now, Stockard allegedly mined a few, um, I'm sorry, he allegedly, allegedly mined a few barrels of silver out of the mine when he found it and uh, sold that silver to the mafia who turned it into gold coins and paid him in that. In the early 70s, Stocker took his friend, Richard Kellogg, to the mine to show him that it really existed. And there's a short documentary on Kellogg's book and his experiences in the mine. Uh, if you want to check that out, I've got it up at uh, WRKR.com and on the 1077 RKR app for you to check out. And if you're even just a little bit skeptical, um, he's going to make you a believer with the way he tells this story um, and, and that he has been there. This is, this is directly pulled from him and his book. Quote, we turned into a room that had 17 stone pillars left in place. Some of the pillars he said were, and he was talking to his buddy, Jake, some of the pillars were solid silver. Jeez. So when we got past these 17 silver pillars, he shined his light up on a dark wall and it looked like it was a large piece of Swiss cheese that had just been carved out in a whole bunch of different holes. And he asked him, you know, what is that? And he says, that is the wall of silver. He stepped it off for him and it was about 30 paces long and it disappeared into the wall, the ceiling and the floor at each end. So a literal wall of silver is hidden somewhere in the Keweenaw Peninsula in an old mine. Damn. Now, he talked about uh, this cave-in that he saw when they first walked in uh, in some of the tunnels, 
and some of the old tools and wheelbarrows and and desks and stuff that had probably been there since the 1800s, since it, it had been initially mined there. Um, and uh, he actually found some wireframe glasses that were sitting on a desk right near the entrance that Jake said, don't touch those. That's probably a memorial for somebody who died, you know, in one of the cave-ins of the mine. Um, now, Jake has since died, and I, unfortunately, I think Richard has, has recently died as well, but he tried to return to the mine in 1979 and then in the early 2000s as well, but he couldn't find it despite retracing his steps almost identically. Man, I'm going up to the Upper Peninsula <laughs> next May into June, and now I really want to try to find this. I have no clue where to even start. Well, it's in the Keweenaw Peninsula specifically. Okay. So it's it's up there a ways. Winter, probably not a great time no. <laughs> to go looking for but this. But the time I'm going, probably perfect. Yeah. Now, if somebody does find it, there are two clues that they could bring back to prove that they found it. Uh, the first would be the Mafia's gold coins that Jake stashed in there because he got paid on those gold coins from them and he left them in the mine. So they're just sitting there on that desk near the cave-in area. The other thing you could bring out of there to prove that you were there, Richard said he left his dog tags uh, sitting on the desk in the mine from when he was in the military. So if you go in and you find the wall of silver, he said even after he was gone, which again, I, I'm pretty sure he actually just recently died, you can grab one of his dog tags and bring it out with you as proof that you have once again found the wall of silver in the Keweenaw Peninsula. Now, unfortunately, as cool as this sounds and as much as I'd love to be rich, there is no way in hell you're going to catch me looking for this mine. <laughs> I don't I do not do that. Like caves, they're a little different. But mines, like literal holes that were cut into the earth by people, um, which which literally billions of tons of earth and stone above my head. No, no, that's, that's not happening. Hell no. <laughs> not even for literally a wall of silver. You can send me photos, broadcast a live stream. That's fine. I'll even, <laughs> I'll pay someone else to go in there and find it for me. Cause if we do find it, we're going to be rich anyway, you know, but I mean, you know, I, if, if you're interested when you're up there, if you want to go searching for me, I mean, with me, you know, up there, that'd be great. No, no, you're literally just going to make me do all the work. I mean, I'll, I'll tie a rope around you so you can, you know, pull your way out of the cave. <laughs> Just remember to at least grab, you know, the gold coins on your... 1077 RKR. It's a Rocker Morning Show with Mark Reichhouse. And Meatball. You know how the big joke has always been that when a business goes under and ends up selling, that it'll most likely become a spirit Halloween. You yeah. usually see the memes, they slap a spirit Halloween. Some Yeah, there's, there's already one in the mall. It shouldn't <laughs> come as a surprise that the spirit brand would want to toy with the idea of expanding. And indeed... That is exactly what has happened. Oh, no. What it has they been, do? It has been announced by the same company that owns Spirit Halloween that, yes, this year they will be opening a slew of stores called Spirit Christmas. <laughs> and once Halloween's over, they're going to be setting up multiple locations. <laughs> Spirit Christmas, it's here. Uh. As of right now... There's only 10 locations that have been announced. You can even get your picture taken with Santa. This okay, this is this is hilariously awesome. Like why why did we never imagine that this could, <laughs> you know, be conceived? So I just uh so okay, so what are what are they going to have there? Like is it just going to be you know, like Spirit Halloween except Christmas? Yeah, and we we have this on the 1077 RKR app. Basically from what they're describing, stocking stuffers, unique decorations, apparels and gifts. So it's going to be just like Spirit Halloween, apparently. The good thing is they're at least waiting until after Halloween to, <laughs> Correct. to do it. Currently, there's no Michigan locations announced, but you got to imagine that they're basically just kind of testing the waters. Yeah. And they're going to be they're going to be here next year for sure. <laughs> there's I have little doubt about that, especially if they're successful. You know, yeah. 9781077. Do you think these are basically just going to eventually take over all the abandoned buildings in <laughs> Southwest Michigan? Like we're going to have a, a spirit Easter and a spirit summer. And it's, <laughs> that's basically the, the future of all of our abandoned buildings. And where would you like to see one as well? I, 
I hope they don't catch people off guard, though, and have, like, an animatronic Rudolph <laughs> with those eyes that glow red and has, like, an evil laugh, <laughs> you know? Like, well, what? We told you it's going to be just like our <laughs> Halloween shops. <laughs> Two for Tuesday, Kalamazoo's Rock Station, 1077. RKR, it is the Rock and Morning Show with Meatball. And Mark Frankhouse. So... Uh, after a year of waiting, progress being made in Muskegon for the first ever cannabis entertainment complex going to be built up there. Hmm. Uh, this will be the first of its kind in the entire world where you can procure your cannabis products and consume them in the same location. So instead of uh, like a corner market approach where you just go and get your stuff and leave, uh, it's kind of more like a brewery formula. Uh, but instead of pints, it's uh, pre-rolls, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I think That's it's pretty cool. funny. So where does the entertainment part of this come in? All right. So in addition, well, that's, you know, you consume and have all the fun you want. No. Um, in addition to the, uh, you know, the showroom and the lounge areas, um, which there there will be an indoor and an outdoor lounge area for smokers, non-smokers, that type of thing. Um, they're also going to have a restaurant and a bar uh, where you can order food and drinks. Uh, and when they have events, there's going to be an area outside where they have other vendors and stuff they could set up uh, on the lawn. And then in the back next to the greenhouse, they're going to have a huge open field uh, where they can set up a stage and other booths and literally hold like concerts and events. And I guess, you know, throw weddings if you want, I'm sure. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's a full on entertainment complex in that regard. So, uh, yeah, where you can you can consume and uh, consume your cannabis and buy it all. Yeah. Openly in the same place. <laughs> This boggles my mind. You know, back in the day when you'd go to a restaurant or something, they'd be like, oh, what would you like, smoking or not smoking? <laughs> now you walk in, it's like, what, what section would you like, smoking or edibles? <laughs> <laughs> How are you vibing out tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty accurate. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this uh, it, uh, they were talking to the owner. This is Fields Cannery. Uh, they're going to be opening up up there. And they were talking to him on, I think it was Fox 17, and he was like, I've been to Amsterdam, I've been all over the road, all over the world and stuff. There is no other place in the world that has all these licenses for alcohol, food, and cannabis distribution and, and usage in the same place. So they're going to be the first of their kind in the entire world. Um, and it's going to be right here in West Michigan, in, in Muskegon. It's only a matter of time before, like, literally all these cities in Michigan become sister cities with Amsterdam. <laughs> you know, it's like... Yeah. That's our future. I just like it, this sounds cool, and I'm really, I'm really kind of excited for this because who knows what kind of shows you're going to start getting at, at, you know, an entertainment complex for cannabis, right? You know, uh, it, it, maybe I don't know. Snoop Dogg makes more appearances in town or something, or <laughs> I don't know. I, it, it could be a ton of on Cypress Hill pops in every once in a while, but uh, I, I, I am a little disappointed though because when I found out that they were opening a cannabis entertainment complex, I was like, oh, cool. So like. You know, I can go in and procure what I want, and then they're going to have, like, a whole wall of, like, Nintendo 64s ah. and and a bar that serves snacks with nothing but, like, Mountain Dew and Cheetos. <sighs> like, I don't know. You set your expectations so low, and somehow they just... They exceeded my expectations, but, like, <laughs> I didn't want them to. <laughs> Can, can they open up a version that's just Mountain Dew and Cheetos? I think that's called your house. Oh, 